everybody and happy monday it is june 26th and this is live stream number 18. uh this one actually scheduled i think i'm a minute or two early on so we should see some some people uh kind of like hopefully coming in here so this week i am going to try to schedule uh each live stream because that's one of the quests i have gotten uh from people is they want to know when uh they can actually you know join in on the live stream now of course if you're watching the recording the awesome thing about youtube is that this is recorded uh so i'm just gonna wait kind of like a minute here uh getting going with what i'm going to show inside of fusion what uh today is virtual shops with joints um so we're then going to jump into that i can see we got eric here already hello eric thank you uh for joining now if you uh if you're watching the recording just uh, know that the first couple of minutes here you can just speed forward also if you think that i'm talking too much in the beginning here hey that's all right man just uh speed you know scroll forward hit the little bar down there and play it on on two times speed or whatever um if you have any suggestions on what you want to see here on the live stream you will see down in the description area is my email address lars.christiansen at autodesk.com definitely would love uh, any suggestions on what you want to see that is what these live streams really is about it's supposed to be like 15 30 minutes um, just trying to add some kind of uh, value to you guys versus, uh, you know, the normal production videos that I'm still uh, kind of working on. I can see that we already got uh, a bunch of people in here. Good to see you all. Thank you so much, uh, so much for, for jumping in here uh, on the on this live stream. Uh, again, this is number 18, so it's cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, as soon as this live stream is over, I will uh, go in and schedule the next one. It's not going to be the same time all week long. Uh, just I couldn't fit that into to my schedule. But we'll try this week, try to schedule them, uh, you know, about 24 hours uh, ahead of time. And hopefully that gives people a better chance uh, joining on. So, uh, today we're going to talk about these uh, virtual shops. And thanks to Roger, uh, this was a request that he emailed me about. Uh, where he wanted to talk a little bit about that. And it actually fits very well with uh, Friday's uh, live stream where I uh, kind of like modeled up Jimmy Dresser, uh, go back and, and watch live stream number 17, uh, his work table. Uh, and I was kind of like using uh, tubing to, uh, to kind of create that. So that's what I'm going to talk about today inside of Fusion 360. So I'm going to jump in there and come back to uh, the chat in a moment. All right, back into Fusion 360. So, uh, like I said, uh, Roger was the one who asked how I would handle uh, virtual shops when it comes to joining uh, different components. So I'm really just going to draw up uh, what I kind of like used uh, last week uh, for the rest of table to uh, to use that, and that's kind of like square, kind of square tubing. Now I'm going to go ahead here. This is a brand new. Uh, document and I'm gonna go ahead with that rule that I'm gonna create uh, a component because if you're making something like different tubings you probably want different uh, components so I'm gonna right click up here and say uh, new component that will give me uh, that component one uh, active down here and then I'm gonna go ahead here and just sketch my tubing and it doesn't really matter what plane uh, you select I'm gonna hit the S key to get my my sketch uh, toolbox up here and i have the center rectangle right there and i'm just going to make this one three by three inches kind of a rectangle like that then the way i did the uh this square tubing for the rest of the table was that i then hit o for offset so o for offset and i selected this edge and i just drew in like minus 0.25 and there was my tubing. Now you could go ahead and add uh, the fillets because there's going to be fillets in here um, as a sketch command, but I actually prefer to do it as a feature, so I'll do it in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit here and hit Q for the press pull command and uh, just select and draw. I want to go this way. That's going to be minus. Now here's maybe a little trick you don't know um, is that you can actually, I want. Well, I want this, I'm working in inches, but I actually want this in six feet long. So you can actually go in and say minus six, and then you can actually just type in FT. 
and that will give you it in feet. Um, so there's 12 inches to a foot. So you kind of like can save yourself from uh, from doing uh, a lot of math. Now, so what Roger uh, emailed me about was that he uses a lot of, I believe, this type of aluminum tubing. And uh, he, you know, when you, he gets to mate it together with other pieces, it's kind of difficult because he wants to use the virtual shop after the radius is on. Right now, it's easy enough. If I went ahead and said I was going to do joints on here and I just go to the front of it, um, you will see that the little, um, I don't know what you call it, the coin or whatever you call that little half moon shaped Pac-Man thing looking, uh, you will see that will snap to, to the corner up here and that's all great. But if I cancel out of it for a second and I add those fillets uh, that I was talking about, so I'm going to hit F for fillet. And in case you didn't know, you don't have to spin the model around. You can actually just look here how Fusion will let you select through the model. So we just multi-select all these. And I'm going to make these 0.25. And then I'm actually going to repeat the command then again. And I'm going to do that by right-clicking and say repeat fillet. Lazy. And uh, then again, you don't have to rotate your model to find lines. It will actually... You can see how you can kind of like find them through the model. It's intelligent it's not enough to do that. A lot of a CAD system has this function. So if you all are also using all the CAD systems, check out to see if that function is there. So now where I've added these fillets, if I go back into the joint command, you will now see that, um, well, I can't select that virtual shop anymore. And if I select clicking right here, you'll see that it's kind of like just placing it and uh, you know that's not really what I want I want it over here well there is a cool tool inside of uh, the assemble icon up here it's called joint origin what that really means is that you can kind of like create your own uh, customizable uh, coins or whatever pac-mans whatever you want to call these origin uh, things looking so I'm going to click that one and zoom in and then if I select that same corner I selected before, you will actually see that I get the move uh, command here. And now I can drag out here, and I know that's going to be 0.25, because that's kind of like the radius. And now it has placed uh, one of those in here that is now available for me to use. So if I was Roger, what I would do was I would draw uh, one of these up, and then I would insert uh, this uh, joint origin. Uh, manually in here now of course I don't expect um, Roger to do this every single time that he's using this type of tubing but if he's lazy like me this is maybe also where you start thinking about kind of like having a library of these tubings so if you on a regular basis are using in my case here I created a 3 by 3 square tube that was uh, six foot long and now I have these um, these coins on here for reference you could go into <clears throat> into your data panel excuse me <clears throat> into the data panel and you could for example create a new folder in here that you are going to call uh, library parts right and now you could save uh, this model here as your three by three by six tubing and you could save that inside of that um, inside of that library library folder or library part sorry public share see the library parts so right there yep so you could save it in there and now you always have that available uh, to bring into the sign so how would I go so that's cool so now I kind of like place that one in here so that's kind of cool but how would I work with it in in a normal kind of basis way well if I get out of the one that we just created because now we saved it it's over here um, the way I would do it was you can right click and then you can say insert into current design, right? Of course, it has to be saved first. Doo -doo -doo. 
all right? Um, so now I could insert that into uh, a current design like this. Uh, now, when I bring it in, you will see that it's length and you may be like, well, wait a minute, that's, you know, I don't want it length um, because when I bring this scratch looping in, this is maybe when I want to cut it to different lengths. Well, you can right click on this one and you can break the link. So now it does, it's not associated over with our, our kind of like library part anymore. Now it's kind of uh, its own thing uh, in here as a, uh, as a component. So that's kind of cool. Now, uh, I hope this is kind of helpful uh, for you guys. Uh, but another thing I wanted to show as we're in here, because when I was doing the, the rest of the table, um, I was kind of, you know, many times you got to use more of these, right? And I don't really need to keep on dragging, uh, you know, one from the library in as I need them. So what I could do was that I could go in here and I could create a copy of this one. But there's something you need to be aware of if you do that. If I go in here and I right click on this component and uh, I say copy and I right click on it again and I say paste, it comes up with, uh, with the move dialog box, which is all good. And now you'll see that I, I get a copy. But if you're doing a standard copy paste, these two parts are still, they're linked together. What that means is if I go into uh, my other component here, oh, now I'm doing it inside of another assembly. This was not how I had, hang on. I did a step, this was not how I had, had planned to do it. All right, so if I go into this component, I will still do it inside the, comp the tubing. If I do a copy, of this of this component number two, so a copy, and I do a paste. Move it over here. Now it resides inside of my three by three tubing. Um, if I go into that component here, it still shows up like that. Okay. Um, if I go in and I say edit the feature. And I, for example, decided that I was going to do that divided by two. You will see that that even though that I'm I'm editing the first component, it made the other component short too because I just did a copy paste. So it's actually a copy. If I instead do a copy and then go up on the main of uh, of an assembly up here, and I do a paste new you see how then I now have a not only paste but I have a paste new if I do that and I roll that one over hit okay and let's go into that one and if I go in and say I want to edit that one and let's just get now you will see it, it actually disappeared when I go in and edit it it jumps back to the original one but don't worry about that that's not uh, really hurting anything when I hit OK, you will see that when you do the paste new, then it keeps, uh, the, it, it have them split. So paste new means that you get an individual component. Just copy paste means that it will just be a copy of the original. So that was kind of like how I went ahead in, uh, in Friday's um, uh, live stream and I did the, the table for uh, the gym, what I call the Jimmy DeResta uh, table in here. I'll just call it up so you can see it. And I did get a couple of requests for actually making the video on how how I did this. Um, so here you can see all the different frames. So you can see you're ending up with a lot of uh, square tubing. In Friday's live stream, we were talking about parts list. But so a couple of things that I hope that you got away from from this example here, from Roger's example is, First of all, if you do want these virtual sharps, um, that you can create them by using the joint origin. And then I would recommend that you save that out into a library folder. So you're just bringing that one in, you break the link uh, and, and use it as a, kind of like an individual component uh, because that's what you would, 
well, I guess that's what you would kind of like do in real life, right? I, I like to try to model like that uh, when I can to act like the way I would do in real life. So in real life, you will go out to your shelf where you maybe had, you know, a stack of these. You will take one off. So that would be I would take it out of the library and then I would break the link back to my stock. And that's the one I'm cutting out in pieces. And then I hope that you learned the trick about if you copy paste, then you get a copy. But if you copy, go up on the and right click on the root of that assembly, then you get the paste new. And that will be a, uh, a separate. Uh, it's not just a copy. It's it's a copy that is not attached to uh, to the one you copied from. So I really hope that the uh, that this was helpful. I definitely want to thank Roger for, uh, for, for writing an email and, and asking about this. Roger, I hope that this uh, kind of answered your, your question a little bit better than the email that I returned to you. I'm just going to take a quick look inside of the chat here. Just make sure we can see we got like 52 people. What is absolutely, absolutely awesome. Uh, so let's just see here if we got any questions. We got people from Germany. Um, Maui, that's awesome. Um, hey, Blaze, just sent you an email uh, not long ago. Um, all right. I can see, oh, um, somebody's asking if this is truly free. So chime in, I give it away. Tomorrow's topic is exactly that. We're gonna talk about is Fusion 360 really free? So that is tomorrow's topic. So please uh, jump in and uh, if you are interested in seeing more about that. It looks good guys. Uh, so one of the questions here is how would I go ahead about creating a 45 miter uh, with the corners? So going in and cutting it. And uh, right from top of my head, I would actually probably just go in to one of them and sketch a line. And uh, I'm not quite sure if I can cut with that line or if I have to create a plane. And then you could use the combine feature to remove it from the other ones. That is maybe another good uh, live stream topic. Let's keep on working on these, uh, these square tubings. That's awesome. Um, yeah, guys, really uh, appreciate you guys jumping in on this live stream. I hope that you got something out of it. For you guys who is watching the recording, down in the description area is my email address. Send me anything that you would like to, to see. And um, if you like this, uh, then do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like this, well, hey, hit the thumbs down. That's that's okay. And uh, if you are curious how you're going to get notified about these uh, live streams, just hit the subscribe button and you should get an email uh, whenever we are on. So uh, I'm going to do as I normally do. I am going to... Um, to stop the broadcast here and then I'm going to jump into the chat and chat a little bit with, with you guys who, uh, who are sticking around. So until uh, the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Oh, and don't forget, if you haven't gotten it, the CNC handbook, that free CNC handbook is down in the description area too, the link for that. So go and check that out. Take care, guys. And until the next time, have an awesome day.